Masante gedele de boboko sopra gedede ke shante gedele. Masante gedele de boko sopra gedede ke shante gedele. Maka shante gedele de boko sopra gedede de de ke shante gedede. Holy Spirit, do it again. Holy Spirit, do it again. Open our eyes. Open our ears. Open our hearts. Let everyone see you. Let everyone hear you. Let the will of the Father be done. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take control. Holy Spirit, take control. Let God's people be ministered to at this time. In the mighty name of Jesus, as many as will watch now, as many as will watch this uh, video later, Holy Spirit, minister to them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, have your way again today. Another Sunday. Another time of tender hearts link. Another time to talk to your people, to minister to your people. Lord, have your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, have your way. Minister to your people. I pray that no one will escape your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, let everyone be empowered. Let everyone be empowered. Let everyone be inspired. Let everyone be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, let your cancer come to pass. In the life of your people, in Jesus' name, let your cancer prevail. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, you are wonderful. Beautiful beyond description. Too marvelous for words. Lord, we worship you. I worship you at this time. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised forever. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised forever. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you. Hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. I give thanks to you, hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised forever, hallelujah. Lord, we give you all the glory, all and all adoration. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. And Lord, we thank you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we honor you. Have your way again at this time. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, wherever you are watching from. I am Pastor Taiwo Iredele Dubi, and this is Tender Hearts Link. Tender Hearts Link is uh, to minister to Christian singles and couples, to reveal the mind of God to them concerning life, concerning relationship, marriage, ministry, and um, whatever God wants to say to his people. It is to answer the questions that may be in their heart. And I pray you'll be greatly blessed at this time in Jesus' name. Um, in uh, Daniel chapter 9, verse 22, an angel of the Lord informed Daniel and said that he had come to give Daniel skill and understanding. And that is what God is doing through this program, to give his people skill and understanding to make them know what they need to know so that they don't fall into Satan's trap. And I pray you will not fall into Satan's trap. You will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. One of the scriptures we stand on here in Tender Hearts Link is Psalms 138 verse 8. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. The Lord's mercy endures forever. The Lord does not forsake the works of his hands and he will not forsake me in Jesus' name. You should personalize it. Say to yourself regularly, declare it that the Lord will perfect all that concerns us and you will find the word of God working for you in Jesus' name. And one of the words that God has given us for this year 2024 is um, 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 10. The Bible says that Daniel, uh, David, became greater and greater, for the Lord was with him. 
And this year, 2024, I pray that you will become greater and greater by the Father in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will help you. You will overcome. Things will get better and better for you. You will turn upward only. You will not go down in Jesus' name. You will not be frustrated in life in the mighty name of Jesus. Don't forget that this program holds every Sunday, same time. If there's going to be any change, it will be announced. Um, if anyone contacts you, asking you to transfer money into an account so that you can be prayed for, whatever. Even if the person claims to be Pastor Taiwo Iredilodwi, I want you to know that it has nothing to do with me. So don't fall for that. Singles, God wants your relationship to glorify him. Let the word of God prevail. Glorify God, honor him. Stay away from everything that can grieve the Holy Spirit. I see said something about that in church this morning. That is one of God's instructions to us for this year, 2024. Um, avoid doing things that will grieve the Holy Spirit. So in your relationship, honor the Lord. Honor him, let the word of God direct you. And for those who are married, the same word is for you. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Honor the Lord. Um, continue to love. Continue to pray. Stand. Put your trust in God. Say in your marriage. However, if your life is in danger and you have to leave, don't leave to begin to mess around. Make sure that you continue to pray for your marriage. Make sure that you continue to obey the Lord. You continue to honor the Lord. Make sure that the word of God prevails in all that you do. Continue to pray and remain intimate with the Holy Spirit. And you will find that, oh, the Lord is faithful. You will find that you will be a victor. You will not be a victim. Satan, whatever Satan has planned, it's, it will not stand. It will not come to pass because God is faithful. The Lord is faithful and he will help you. He will see you through. If at, if at any time you are not very sure of what to do concerning your situation, Look for people who know the mind of God, who will be able to, who know, who, people who know the mind of God, who know the word of God, and who will be able to cancel you properly the right way so that you can have victory and uh, the right results. And I pray all will be well with you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So last week I started talking about what to do. If um, there's parental disapproval, your parents disapprove of your relationship, uh, how a, what a Christian should do if there's parental disapproval. I started talking about it last week. I said quite a number of things last week. I won't be able to repeat everything. If you missed that um, uh, um, episode, it's on uh, YouTube. You'll find it on YouTube and um, on my Facebook page. So I'm going to continue on that same uh, topic what a christian should do if there's parental disapproval or how can a christian handle parental disapproval and um i dealt with this matter in some of my books i mentioned it in um tears on my pillow i mentioned it in love on the pulpit i mentioned it in um in uh, this time around, I mentioned it in, I'll take you there, quite a number of um, my books. I also mentioned it in Never Say Never. So try to uh, read those books, if you, novels, if you have not read them. They are Christian romance novels. Try to get them. They are available in uh, bookstores and online. So what should a Christian do if there's parental disapproval? The parents don't approve of your relationship i said some things last week i will just mention some of them briefly because they are relevant to what i'm going to discuss today i say that a time comes when a child becomes an adult and that the child wants to get married and the child wants to make his or her own decisions there's no problem about that but when but if you're a christian no matter who you are, no matter your status, no matter your age, your gender, as a Christian, you will always be a son of God, a daughter of God. And that means God should handle whatever you are going to do. That means you have to trust God. You have to go to God. You have to do it God's way. The world 
has its own way of doing things. People who belong to the world, they have their own ways. They follow the, the world system. But as a Christian, we must follow the principles of the kingdom of God. We, we must follow the word of God and do it God's way. And that is how we can have rest. Rest for your soul. And the Lord is faithful. I have said it before, I will say it again. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And the Lord will direct your path. And you will find him defending you, fighting for you, providing for you, taking care of you. And he will help you all in all that you do in the mighty name of Jesus. So as a child, as a Christian, as a child of God, you must involve God in all that you do. It will also help you if you um, let God lead you or if you, if you let God choose a spiritual parent for you, your spiritual parent, someone you can go to if you are not very sure of what you are receiving or if you are not very sure of what's going on. You love someone, but your parents disapprove. And you are praying, but you are, you are not very sure. To be sure, to be sure that everything is fine, it will help if... Um, Aside praying and all of that, aside going into the word of God, if you, if you have um, a spiritual parent who is godly, who is godly, who knows the ways of the Lord, then that will also help you. And then I also said last week that if you are a Christian, of course, according to the word of God, the person you, are going, you want to get married to should also be a Christian. Do not um, choose someone who is not a Christian. It does not work that way. And then I also said last week that when it comes to choosing whom to marry, God wants parents to be involved. God has placed certain responsibilities on the parents. He wants them to be involved. So if the parents are involved, if they are asking you questions or they are asking your intended partner questions, where are you from? Who are your parents? Uh, where do you work? Well, and all of that. If they are asking you questions, don't begin to frown like, what are they doing? What are they talking about? It's okay as parents. God wants them to be involved. However, it's possible that um, they disapprove of the relationship, but they are wrong. And it's also possible that they disapprove because they have seen something that might cause problems in future and your parents are right. So that's what we are talking about. What, what to do? Is the experience that disapproval? Who is right? Who is wrong? What steps should you take? How can you know the mind of God? To obey or not to obey? Who should you obey? God or your parents? And all of that. That's what we are talking about. I said some things last Sunday, as I said earlier. So this is a continuation. Last Sunday, I talked about what to do. Where your parents, you are a Christian. But your parents are not Christians, and they disapprove of your relationship. They are not Christians, and they are saying no. What to do and all of that. So let, let's just... We are going a step further. I said last Sunday that where there's parental disapproval, it can be an indication of a mismatched or a bad relationship. It can be an indication, but not always. But in some cases, it might be an indication that something is wrong with that relationship. It's possible. So what the Christian should do is to pray, seek the face of God, and I'm going to analyze some of the things that can be done. All right, so, some factors to consider where your parents are saying no. Some factors to consider. I'll mention two of them. Number one, when your parents say no. Number one, what does the Bible say about your parents' opinion? Your parents are saying no. Okay, what does the Bible say concerning that matter? If the Bible if, if what your parents say or what they want, if you contradict the word of God, then the word of God must prevail. You have to go with the word of God. As a Christian, 
you must go with the word of God. So you have to know what the Bible says. If you are not very sure, that is where the, uh, the role of the Holy Spirit uh, comes in and then having a spiritual, a godly spiritual parent, they will also be able to guide you. So that's number one, the first factor. Then I'll mention a second factor. Where your parents say no, then you have to ask yourself, who are my parents? Do my parents know what they are saying? Do my parents know the will of God for my life? Now, if your parents are not born again, they love you, but if they are not born again, there's no way they can know the will of God for your life. There's no way they can know God's divine purpose for your life. They may love you. They want you to, to succeed in life. They want uh, you to be married. They want you to have different things. But the will of God, your divine destiny, there's no way those parents will know that. And if care is not taken, they might want to lead you in the wrong direction. They might lead you out of the will of God. So it's important to, uh, that's the second factor to consider. Number one, who am I? The first uh, factor, what does the uh, Bible say concerning that matter? Number two, who are my parents? Are they born again? Do they know what they are saying concerning this matter? Do they know the mind of God for me? The will of God, my divine destiny. If your parents are born again and they know the will of God for you and they know what God's mind is concerning you and they are saying no, then you have to slow down. That means they are not any kind of people. That means they are not uh, ordinary people. That means you, can, you have to... You have to consider what they are saying. God might be using them to say something to you. And we have a perfect example. I talked about Samson and his parents last week. And we need to refer to it today. And we are going to look at it from another angle. From another angle. Samson's parents disapproved of Samson's relationship. Judges chapter 14. Let's look at it from verse 1. Judges chapter 14 from verse 1. Now Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So Samson went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Samson knew that he was not supposed to fraternize with the Philistines. The Philistines were the enemies of the children of Israel. And Samson knew that he was not supposed to marry one of their uh, uh, women. But that was what Samson wanted to do here. He said, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. So he knew who the woman was. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. Verse 3. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman? Among the daughters of your brethren, or among all my people, that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistine. And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. So consider the worth of Samson's parents. Did they know the mind of God? Did they know? The will of God for Samson, it appeared so. They said, why can't you find a, a woman from among your brethren? They knew the word of God that Samson was supposed to find a wife from among his own people. And that was why um, Abraham asked his servants to go to his brethren, to his own family, to get a wife for Isaac. And when the servant said, if I can't get a wife from among your people, can I get a wife for Isaac from the people here? And Abraham said, never. Promise me 
Promise me you will not do that. You must get a wife from among my people and God will lead you. God, God is able to do it. Don't say, God, God, don't say it may not happen. Don't say, what if it is impossible? It's not going to be impossible. God will go ahead of you. God will lead you. And sometimes you find some people who begin to think that, well, what if I can't get a good Christian man? What if I can't get a good Christian woman? Can I marry anybody if I can't get Mr. Right? Can I, get, can I marry Mr. Wrong and, may, and turn him to Mr. Right? No. Means that that person does not even know the ways of God because God does not fail. The, the, the psalmist said, I was young, now I am old, but I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. God is faithful. You don't have to uh, get married to Mr. Wrong and try to cover. God knows what to do. He who made the eyes, will he not see? Can he not see? He who made the heart, will he not know? He who made the ears, will he not hear? Will he not understand? So sometimes people make these mistakes. Abraham was very sure. Abraham told his servant, never. God will give you the right woman. Don't worry about that. You just go to my people. God will direct you. And if you are trusting God for a man to marry, a, good, a Christian man to marry, a Christian woman to marry, I pray for you. Put your trust in the Lord. The Lord will direct you. And I pray the Lord will help you. You will not miss God's will for your life. In Jesus' name. So, Samson's parents said, Why can't you find a wife from among your brethren? They had a point. They were right. That was the will of God for Samson. Samson was supposed, supposed to find a wife from among his own people. And then they said, why must you get a wife from the uncircumcised Philistines? I'm sure you remember that uh, that was the word that David used when he saw Goliath. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? The children of Israel had a covenant with God. The Philistines did not have that covenant with God. So as a covenant child of God, you are supposed to marry a covenant child, another covenant child of God. Not someone who does not have a covenant with God. That was what Samson was doing here. Someone who had a covenant, who had a purpose, who had a calling. Samson was not even an ordinary uh, 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 Israelite. He had a calling. And the calling was to destroy the Philistines. So, but Samson said, no, I want to marry her. She pleases me well. I like her. I like her, her beauty. She's beautiful. I like her appearance and all of that. But marriage takes more than that. Now, I mentioned two factors to consider. Where the experience are disapproval. What does the Bible say concerning what my parents are saying? My parents' opinion. And then number two, who are my parents? Do they know what they are saying? Do they know the mind of God for me? So let's apply those two, two factors. Let's apply them to this case. To test what is going on. To know who is right and who is wrong. So the first factor, what does the word of God say concerning your parents' opinion? The disapproval. What does the Bible say? Are your parents right or are they wrong? So Samson's parents said no. Don't marry that Philistine woman. What does the Bible say concerning that? Let's look at Judges chapter 13, verse 1. In Judges chapter 13, verse 1, the Bible says, Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines to punish them for 40 years. So the Philistines were the enemies of the children of Israel. They were their enemies. And whenever the children of Israel disobeyed God, God will allow their enemies to overpower them, to begin to uh, oppress them. So the Philistines were enemies. You are not supposed to marry your enemy. And don't marry the enemy of God. Verse 5 of that same chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 5. Concerning Samson himself, the Bible, um, the angel of the Lord told 
Samson's mother. Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So Samson had a calling. That was the word of God concerning him. There was a word before his birth. He had a calling. He was supposed to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. And then, let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Deuteronomy chapter 7 from verse 1. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which you go to possess, and has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites and the Gagashites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. And when the Lord your God delivers them over to you, you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. And you shall not make marriages with them. You shall not give your daughter to their son, nor take their daughter for your son. For they will turn your sons away from following me. So, the, the word of God was clear. That Samson was not supposed to marry from among the Philistines. He was not supposed to marry the enemies of the children of Israel. Or one of the enemies of the children of Israel. And the parents were right. The parents knew all these things. The parents knew they were supposed to be involved. The parents knew they were, not suppo they, they were supposed to discourage Samson from marrying one of the Philistine women. And that was why they said no and all of that. So the word of God was clear concerning this. Samson was not supposed to marry uh, that woman. So the, Samson's uh, parents' opinion was supported by the word of God. So Samson was supposed to, at that point, listen to his parents. The second factor that I mentioned, do my parents, my parents are saying no, but who are they? Do they know God that I should listen to them? Do they know God? Are they born again? Do they know God's will for my life? Do they know about my divine destiny? God's purpose for me. If, they, if, they, if your parents don't know, then you have to be careful so that you are not misled. But if they happen to know the mind of God for you, then you have to slow down and consider what they are saying and pray so that you can be sure. Okay, they know the mind of God for me. But concerning what they are saying, are they right? What does the word of God say? So in this case, who are Samson's parents? That is the question. Why should Samson listen to them? Who are they? Let's look into that. Let's meet Samson's parents. And these are things that you need to do. If there's the parents are disapproval, your parents are beginning to say something about your relationship, then you need to look at it. What are they, is God trying to tell me something? What are my parents saying? Do they have a point? So let's meet Samson's parents. Judges chapter 13. Let's look at it from verse 3. And we are going to read some of those verses there so that we can know his parents and know why Samson should have listened to them. Samson did not listen to them, and he died before his time. His destiny was truncated because he should have listened to them. These your parents. They were not ordinary people. They knew the mind of God. He should have listened to them. Let's read from verse 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared to, to the woman. That's talking about Samson's woman, uh, Samson's mother. The angel of the Lord appeared to the woman. And said to her, so Samson's life began that way. An angel of the Lord appeared to his mother. 
In, and the angel said, Indeed, now you are barren and have born no children, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. Verse 5 For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. So Samson was a child of purpose. This was how he was conceived. So he should have listened to his parents. Let's move on. Let's see why he, he should have listened. And no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then verse 6, So the woman, Samson's mother, came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God. This woman did not really know who appeared to her. But she perceived. She had sense to know that, mm, I don't think this was an ordinary person. And she said, his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God. She knew some things about the ways of God. Very awesome, she said. But I did not ask him where he came from, and he did not tell me his name. And he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. Now drink, now drink no wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. So everything that the angel of God told her, she remembered and said and told her husband everything. She remembered. She did not dismiss the word. That was a woman who had knowledge of God. Another woman could have dismissed them and just disregarded them. But she took note of everything. That was another, another point there. Samson should have known the kind of parents he had. He should have listened to them. My mother is not an ordinary woman. My mother knows the Lord. She knows the, the ways of God, the mind of God. She, he should have listened. Then verse 8. Her husband, Manoah, Samson's father, he prayed to the Lord immediately. When he had that message from his wife, he prayed to the Lord and said, Oh, my Lord. And that's another thing. Some men would not have prayed. Manuel did not need to pray. He could have said, oh, so the man is gone. Oh, well, that's it. Well, okay, let's, let's wait and see. He did not do that. He was a man of prayer. And he knew that he could pray. So he prayed to the Lord. And said, oh, my Lord. Every version of the Bible that you read, you will see it that way. He said, oh, my Lord. He, this man had a relationship with God. And that's another reason why Samson should have listened to his parents. They had a relationship with the Lord. Oh, my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent. So he knew that that person who came, without a doubt, that person was from the Lord. The Lord sent that person to us. He had faith. He believed. Let the man of God whom you sent come to us again. Look at that prayer. Look at that awesome prayer. The man of God had already left. But he knew that through prayer, he could change things. He, through prayer, the man of, he could make the man of God to come again. God could do it. God could direct the steps of that man of God to come again. He knew that it was not too late. That was someone who had a relationship with God. Something should have listened to them. These people were not careless parents. They knew some things about God. Something should have listened. 
Let the man of God whom you sent come to us again. And that should also tell you something. That you can pray. For with God all things are possible. Even if you have lost that thing. Through your prayer, that thing can still come back. Never give up. Don't lose hope. Let the man of God come to us again. And that was not all. He went on to say, let him come to teach us what we should do for the child who will be born. Let him come again to teach us. This man wanted to get it right. He wanted to get it right. No mistake. Definitely this child is from the Lord. Let the man of God come again and tell us how to raise this child for the Lord. That was someone who had a relationship with God. Let him teach us what we shall do. What the manner of life of this child will be. How to raise this child. Verse 9. God does not reject such prayers. Never. God does not reject such prayers. The Bible says in verse 9, and God listens to the voice of Manoah. Of course, God will listen. God loves it when people trust him to that extent. Oh God, let him come back and teach us what to do. Of course, God will answer. God listens to the voice of Manoah. And the angel of God came to the woman again. As she was sitting in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman ran in haste and told her husband and said, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me. He is back. They did not even know that it was an angel of God yet. They thought it was just a man of God. But even if it was a man of God, Manoah, Manoah knew that he could pray and God would make that man or that woman or that person, God could make that person to come back. He prayed and God did it. The man of God came back. In verse 11, so Manoah arose, and for parents who are praying for their children, maybe the children is lost, maybe the, ch the child, maybe the children are lost, or the child is lost, or maybe the child has been misbehaving, or whatever. If Manoah could pray this prayer and God heard him, then I want you to know that God will hear you. Keep on praying. Don't lose hope. Continue to pray for that child. That child will not be lost. Your child will not be lost in Jesus' name. So verse 11, Manoah arose and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said to him, are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. Manoah said, now let your words come to pass. Those were the words of a man who honored the Lord, who had a relationship with the Lord. There was no doubt in his heart. God is moving. This message is from the Lord. This man is from the Lord. So he simply said, now let your words come to pass. And then what will be the boy's rule of life and his work what exactly does god want him to do what is his work his destiny he wanted to know his destiny he wanted to know something's god's will for something so that they could direct something they could raise something for the lord verse 13 and the angel of the lord said to manoah of all that i said to the woman let her observe. Let her be careful. She may not eat anything that comes from the vine, nor may she drink wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean. All that I commanded her, let her observe. Then verse 15, Manoah said to the angel of the Lord, please, wait, let us detain you, and we will prepare a young goat for you. He wanted to entertain the stranger. The same, the same thing that Abraham did. The same thing that Isaac did. He wanted to entertain this man, or this man of God, who had come to give them this message. He did not want to take anything for granted. He wanted to honor the man of God. This is a man with the right heart. This is a man who knows something about God. 
He who has said, oh, thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, safe journey, whatever. But he said, no, wait. So that we can prepare a young goat for you and feed you. You have done, God has used you for, for us. We want to honor you. We want to do something for you. Verse 16. And the angel of the Lord said to Manuel, Though you detain me, I will not eat your food. But if you offer a burnt offering, you must offer it to the Lord. For Manuel did not know yet that he was the angel of the Lord. Then Manuel said to the angel of the Lord, What is your name? So that when your words come to pass, we may honor you. Look at that again. I just love this man. I love this man and his wife. He said, what is your name? So that when your words come to pass, we may honor you. So that we can come back. Is that not what God is looking for all the time? God is looking for people who will come back to glorify him. To say thank you. To honor him. This man did not even know yet that it was an angel of the Lord. He thought the person was just a man of God. But he wanted to honor that man of God for what God had used him to do. He wanted to honor the man. That we may honor you. This shows a good heart. This shows a good parent. This shows that he had a relationship with the Lord. Something should have listened to them. Verse 18. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why do you ask my name? Seeing it is wonderful. Verse 19. So Manuel took the young goats. He did not delay. He took the young goats with a great offering and offered it upon the rock to the Lord. Let me also say that when God comes through for you or when God uses someone to bless you, don't take things for granted. Honor that person. Honor the Lord. Give an offering to the Lord. Testify of the Lord's goodness. Don't say the Lord for granted. Don't take people for granted. There are people who just, oh, well, thank you, and they go. And they are like, well, God used him. And so what? Well, this was, I didn't ask for it. God used him, whatever. Show honor. Show respect. Say thank you. So immediately, immediately, Manuel to the young goats with a grain offering, and offered it upon the rock to the Lord. And he did the wondrous thing while Manuel and his wife looked on. It happened as the flame went up toward heaven from the altar. The angel of the Lord ascended and all of that. The angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And when Manuel and his wife, when they saw it, they fell on their faces to the ground. They fell on their faces to the ground in fear and reverence. They were like, ah, we have seen God. And they fell on their faces. They knew that's about God. That they must not, they could not look into God's face. They must not look into God's face. They immediately fell on their faces. In verse 21, they realized that they had been talking to the angel of the Lord. And in verse 22, Manuel said to his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. He was like, ah, we have seen God. We shall surely die. Because he feared the Lord. He feared the Lord. He reverenced the Lord. And then the wife said in verse 23, no, we shall not die. If the Lord had this desire to kill us, he would not have accepted a burnt offering and a grain offering from our hands. And that is so true. That is so true. That woman also knew the Lord. That woman had sense. She had sense. Now, would he have shown us all these things if he wanted to kill us? God would not have shown us all these things. Nor would he have told us such things as this. At this time, they knew the Lord. Something should have listened to them. So when your parents disapprove, you also have to ask yourself, do they know what they are saying? What do they know about God? What do they know about the word of God? Do they know God's will for my life? Do they know God's purpose for me, my divine destiny? If they happen to know, they have to slow down and take your time to pray 
and check the word of God. And then also consult with your spiritual parents so that you can make the right decision. Because Satan is always, the Bible says he's going about like a roaring lion looking for people to devour. And, um, and um, some, most of the time, if Satan cannot get a person through other ways, he will try to wait for, for, the, for that person, when the person wants to get married, to cause confusion, to make the person marry the wrong person so that he can attack the person's life and destiny. So it's important that uh, we keep these things in mind. So last Sunday, I talked about what to do if your parents are not Christians, and they, but they disapprove of your relationship, what to do. So next Sunday, I'm going to talk about, I'm, I'm still going to continue next Sunday, what to do if your parents are Christians and they disapprove of your relationship. I pray for you. You will not miss it in life in Jesus' name. The Bible says, in vain the net is spread before the bird. Whatever net the enemy has spread before you, I pray you will not fall into that net in Jesus' name. I pray you will not be a victim. You will be victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. The steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. You will allow God to lead you. He will order your steps into greatness and all will be well. You will live, you will not die. You will enjoy your home in Jesus' name. And you will have wonderful children. All will be well. And no matter if you have already experienced or you have been experiencing challenges in the area of relationship or marriage, the Lord is on the throne. And because he is on the throne, it is well. Because he is on the throne, it is well. All will be well. Hold on to the Lord. You will overcome. The Lord does not allow the righteous to be forsaken. He all will be well. He will help you. He will fight for you in Jesus' name. So we'll continue on this same topic next week, Sunday. Don't forget to observe your quiet time. Talk to God and let God talk to you. And uh, don't forget that um, we have um, a spiritual assignment for this year, 2024. I told some uh, the people in my WhatsApp group, 30 minutes of praying in tongues every day. 30 minutes of praying in tongues every day. It will help you. It will help you to quicken your spirit. And um, of course, I have my books um, Christian romance novels. If you have not read them, try, they are available in bookstores and online. And another one will be out soon, one day in December. Try to read these books. They will help you. I also have um, story books for children. And I have other books on relationship and marriage. All will be well. I'll see you next Sunday, same time. Stay blessed. Bye-bye.